I, and let's see, I'm going to turn off my camera and mute, and I'm going to turn this over to uh, Isaac Cervantes, uh, Michigan State University. Awesome. Thank you so much. Hi, everyone. Pleasure to be with you this evening. Um, I definitely appreciate you taking the time out of your evening to learn a little bit more about Michigan State, especially after a long day of work and school. And with the times change, it feels like it's 9 p.m., or at least it does to me. Um, so today I'm going to be going over Michigan State um, just as an overview and, and kind of cover a few awesome opportunities as it relates to you all um, as incoming students. So you all may be tuning in in a variety of different levels, whether you're a uh, freshman, sophomore, junior, and senior, all of this information is going to be applicable. So um, as a smaller group, I definitely encourage, encourage um, engagement. So if you all have any questions, yeah, absolutely ask through the chat or raise your hand and happy to answer those through uh, the presentation component. So I'll go ahead and get started, but I'll go um, and share my screen. Let's see here. Perfect. So you all should see the Michigan State um, landing page there or the presentation title slide. So as I mentioned, it's uh, a brief overview of Michigan State. So if you're not too familiar, hopefully this will add um, some level of insight to Michigan State as, a, as an institution. So I'll go ahead and get started. I always like to start off with just contextualizing, especially for students here in California who maybe have not ventured off or thought about going out of state, especially in the Midwest area. So uh, Michigan State is very central within the state of Michigan. We are located specifically in East Lansing. So we like to use the mitten as a reference. So you can see here in the screen, um, we're about an hour north from Detroit, about an hour from Grand Rapids and about three and a half hours from Chicago. Um, but our, our location makes um, very ideal with regards to just internship opportunities, but also I think the close-knit community that East Lansing does provide. The way I like to describe East Lansing is Michigan State is East Lansing and East Lansing and Michigan State. And what I mean by that is East Lansing is definitely your run-of-the-mill college town, so it's really easy to get around. It's very central, and Michigan State is represented all across um, within our city. So it's something that's really exciting if you're looking to be a part of something big. Um, when you're thinking about going to East Lansing, um, you know, one of the major ways in which I encourage students to, to frequent is the Detroit um, airport. Um, it's about, a, again, an hour and a half commute, but there are def definitely a variety of ways to get to our campus. Um, one of those is going to be the Michigan Fire Airport Shuttle. So it's a very inexpensive um, airport shuttle that actually drops you off in downtown East Lansing, which is um, roughly a block and a half from main campus. Typically when folks um, are visiting, I suggest a few hotel locations in which one of the hotel locations, um, the lobby is actually where the Michigan Flyer will drop you off. So very convenient and very great, especially if you've never been to um, our state or are not too familiar with the surrounding areas. But um, a lot of nonstop flights from a variety of just different places. Um, I, you know, particularly in addition to Southern California, also cover a few of the Southwest states in the state of Hawaii. So I always like to just give a couple of travel tips as you're thinking about potentially visiting Michigan State. So as a transition, I just like to showcase um, the beautiful scenery that is East Lansing. So like I mentioned, um, hopefully these photos give you a good idea of, of what our surrounding area is like. Again, uh, the, the thing that I appreciate about our surrounding area of East Lansing, it is very much catered to students. It's very accessible to students. So anywhere that you go, like I mentioned, uh, Michigan State is represented. Um, but the stretch of, of street that's parallel to our campus um, is, is really great. It's a place where students can grab a bite to eat, study, grab a coffee, um, go out and hang out with friends. And there's just a bunch of great venues around. Um, it's definitely up and coming. Um, as a smaller um, mid-range college town, there's definitely a lot of amenities. There's definitely a lot of growth, as you can see, some of those um, high-rise lofts. And so especially for students who are thinking about living off campus after they um, are on campus for the first couple of years, um, it's definitely a really great accessible place um, and very inexpensive when, when you're thinking about the cost of living. Um, so really great things from art galleries, concerts, restaurants, parks, and a lot of trails. I personally like to ride bikes and, and walk, and there's plenty of it on campus. I think we have roughly 20 miles stretch of a bike path just for students to take advantage. So it is a very expansive place. 
So kind of um, looking a little bit more in regard to our university profile, one of the uh, characteristics I describe Michigan State is it's a very large place, both academically and physically. So East Lansing has a total population roughly of 60,000 or so. And so our student population at Michigan State now surpasses 50,000. So we are a large institution, um, but it's one of those pride points that we um, stick to. And it's something that we think is, is a great part of our institution. And the reason for that, and the reason why we think that is because of the opportunities that are really um, available for our students. So starting off academically, we have over 200 of areas of study that students can go into. Um, and some of our majors um, that are popular amongst our students, especially in California, are definitely going to be in our College of Engineering, Computer Science, our Broad College of Business that has seven distinct majors, and our Arts um, Communication Arts Science College. So for any communications, journalism, art, um, broadcasting, things of that sort. Um, but we have a lot of discovered majors that are highly ranked as well, like our Packaging Science Engineering program, um, which really studies the art and science around packaging and sustainability. And so one of the fun facts is if you've ever frequented Starbucks and you um, ordered yourself a cold beverage and you see the strawless lid, that concept was actually created by one of our graduate students from the Packaging Science program. So thinking about those very nuanced programs that we offer at Michigan State, another discovered major is going to be our supply chain management within our business school. Game and interactive media is also um, highly ranked. Um, so if you're thinking about game design, whether it's the coding or illustration aspect, that's also something that we're known for. Um, but the great thing is with 200 majors, it's very easy for students to tack on a double major or a minor. So we really want to push students to think about those interdisciplinary areas that they want to go into. Um, one thing that's somewhat unique to Michigan State is our three residential college options. So um, within the 200 majors, there's three residential colleges. So a residential college um, provide students more of a small liberal arts college experience while having the benefits of being on a large campus like Michigan State. So those three residential colleges are going to be James Madison, which is for students who are interested in policy, political science, or pre-law, um, Lyman Briggs for anybody interested in the STEM field or any pre-med track students, and then a residential college for arts and humanities for anybody interested in the cultural, the social sciences, social justice. Um, so those are some very distinct um, residential colleges that again, provide students a little bit more of that intimate academic experience. But even being at a campus with 50,000 students, um, we pride ourselves in just kind of the way in which we cater and take care of our students. So our student to faculty ratio is 16 to one. Um, on average, I would say 80% of our students are gonna be in a classroom of, of 45 or less. So. Um, though it's a big place, think of it as a, an, a place of vast opportunity, but academically, you'll definitely have those opportunities to create those more nuanced um, and close relationships with your professors and, and staff. So another thing that I like to highlight um, with regard to Michigan State is your experience. So um, not everything is going to come out of your experience in the classroom. A lot of actually um, what we push are those out of the classroom experiences. And so we like to categorize our um, experience as a build your own adventure or choose your own adventure. And so these are just some of the ways in which students are able to take their um, curriculum and actually apply it to real world settings. And so we're also a very big entrepreneurship um, study um, emphasis school. So we do have a top 25 entre entrepreneurship minor. We also have a Burgess Institute for Entrepreneurship and Innovation. So you don't have to be a business major, though it does belong to our Broad College of Business. Um, but if students want to venture into entrepreneurship, but they have um, interests that are spanned across business, you can definitely get the benefits of having mentorship, resources. If you want to do a startup, we have um, you know, community members who are actively funding student projects. And so it's a really, really great resource for our students on our campus that goes far beyond our business students. Um, the other thing is our undergraduate research. So we are regarded as a tier one research school. Um, essentially what this means is the way in which you're getting your curriculum is going to be a lot of the times facilitated through undergraduate research. And so a lot of the time students are already beginning um, to be able to, to get involved in, in, in research um, during their first year. And so you don't have to wait to the latter part of your academic experience to get involved with research. Um, a lot of the times it's also integrated within your course requirement to conduct some type of research or 
Um, faculty often, you know, publish some research opportunities for students. So it is not rare for students before they graduate to already be published. There's plenty of opportunities to showcase research. We do have symposiums that happen throughout every academic year. Students are able to study abroad, which is also another aspect. So when you're thinking about education abroad, Michigan State actually just ranked as number one amongst public universities and number nine overall. Um, for education abroad and so this is a really great incentive for students to immerse themselves in um, a different part of the world while getting college credit and there's a lot of great opportunities with regards to tying it into your specific area of interest and so every fall we also host a large um, education abroad um, symposium of sorts where we convert our large men and women's basketball arena um, the Breslin Center, and we actually cater uh, a college fair type of program, but instead of uh, universities, you're actually um, learning more about the education abroad programs that are offered. So it's a really great way to just figure out what opportunities are there. And not all education or abroad programs are the same. So some are week long, some are semester long, some are, you know, um, a month long. And so you really get to choose based off of your area of interest. And then when you're thinking about education abroad, obviously there's the financial component. And I'll talk a little bit about um, some of the financial incentives to help our students get a type of experience um, like education abroad. Uh, living and learning communities, like I mentioned, we do have residential colleges, but we also offer them in like our College of Engineering, as well as our residential um, business community. So again, this allows students to live amongst other folks who are also studying the same area of interest. And so again, it's a little bit more tailored. Your classroom sizes tend to be a lot smaller. So there are formal living and learning community opportunities. We also have RISE, which is a living and learning community for anybody interested in environmental sciences or studies. Um, so we're historically an agriculture environmental school, and so we definitely have a lot of great programs um, to offer students in that area. And then for student life, I mean, we have over a thousand student clubs and organizations. We're also a very um, big location for Greek life. We have over 60 active chapters, but we also have paraprofessional programs. We have um, faith spiritual based programs. We have a huge club sports um, presence because we are division one in the Big Ten Conference in 23 men and women's sports. But if you don't want to compete at that level, we still offer club sports in which you can compete against other institutions and travel as well, except obviously the commitment is not as intense as if you were one of a, a D1 student, right? So it's also a great way to stay active, but travel. And then we have our intramural sports as well. Um, but definitely getting involved is going to be key regardless of where you go, just to kind of find that community on your campus. We have plenty, plenty of opportunities for students to get involved. This slide is uh, one of my particular favorites, um, just because I think it highlights the value of a Michigan State degree. And so this is really highlighting some of the metrics in which um, we measure for student success. And so when you're thinking about the return on investment, one of the metrics that a lot of higher ed institutions measure are the first year retention rates. So essentially, what's the likelihood of a first year student actually coming back for that second year and subsequent years? Um, and so this is typically a good indicator for graduation rates. And so we're proud to report we have a 92% first year retention rate. Um, and we are um, within the 75-80 percentile within um, four-year graduation rate. So when we say it's a four-year degree, we mean four years. And the reason for that is the adequate space that we have, uh, the ample faculty network that we have, but also the engagement centers and resources that we have for our students. So I'll get a, into it in a little um, in the further slides, but students are required to live on campus um, for the first two years. And we have a total of five different neighborhoods um, on our campus that make up our, our housing structure. So each one of these neighborhoods has an engagement center. So what those include are health and wellness, both personal and professional. We have academic tutors. We have advisors, both career and academic. We have study spaces. We also have our Sparty Marts, which is our, our version of Trader Joe's, but on campus for students to grab a bite to eat on the go. Um, but essentially what this is, is saying is that regardless of where you're at on campus, you will have access to an engagement center on the first floor of your, your housing residential hall. So you don't have to go into campus campus, especially during the winter times, to receive tutoring, to get a spot to study, to grab a bite to eat. Um, and we think the engagement structure um, is definitely helping students uh, feel supported um, because of how readily it is available for our students. 
And then we're talking about, well, what happens with students when they graduate from Michigan State? Um, and we have a 94% placement rate for employment as well as um, admission into graduate or professional school. So one of the things that I often hear from students that they appreciate is that they, the advisors are actively asking them to consider what their plans are when they are done at Michigan State with their bachelor's degree. And so we are very career driven in making sure that students feel that they're already coming up with a plan um, and thinking about what, what comes after graduation. Uh, another thing that I appreciate about Michigan State is just our alumni network. And so as a student, and even as a student looking for schools, this didn't really mean anything to me. Um, and students, if you are tuning in, this may not mean anything to you, but having a strong alumni network is going to be very key, especially if you plan to go off to Michigan State and you want to relocate back home once you're done with your degree. Um, California has one of the more active um, alumni networks in the nation um, in comparison to even like states like Illinois. And so when you're thinking about, um, you know, having that that connection within industry. We have a lot of really well um, situated alums within Southern California specifically. Um, and so we have over half a million um, active alumni worldwide. And anywhere that I go wearing Michigan State stuff, it always is a conversation starter. So Michigan State is definitely a, a um, well-known institution, not just um, you know nationally, but internationally as well. So thinking about that those value aspects and the return on investment for uh, a degree are, are some of the key points that I like to highlight. So this is going to be one of those um, important factors, especially as you're considering, you know, uh, what what would be a good choice for for you and your family. Um, is going to be cost, right? And so this does give you a breakdown for in-state and out-of-state tuition. So it includes tuition and fees, room and board. Um, and I do include that because, like I mentioned, students are required to live on campus for the first two years. Um, one thing about our tuition structure, though, is it is on a block tuition structure. Simply what that means is um, typically a full-time student will enroll in anywhere from 12 to 15 units. So we have capped our tuition fees to um, account for a max of 18 credits or units. So what that means is if you take a max of 15 credits and you think to yourself, you know what, I think I can handle an additional course um, just to kind of expedite my process on graduation, you absolutely can enroll in that additional class and not have to worry about accruing any additional tuition and fees. Um, and so that's really the, the great aspect of it. But of course, when you're thinking about finances um, and you're looking at that sticker price, um, a large portion of our students, especially first year students, are not paying that price. Um, so close to 90% of our students are receiving some form of financial support. Um, in fact, last year we awarded $2.2 billion in financial aid. And so um, this is a variety of merit-based scholarships, um, federal and state grants, as well as um, work study, um, and things of that sort. So typically we encourage students to apply to us by November 1st of their senior year for maximum scholarship consideration, um, but also to know where you stand with Michigan State early on. Um, and then automatically you're considered for um, honors college as well as merit-based scholarships. So Michigan State has one of the nation's um, most historic honors college programs. And this is um, distinctly for anybody who is interested in pursuing, again, that rigorous type of academic experience. So if you are a high achieving student and you're taking a lot of APs or IB or honors courses, this might be a program um, that may be evaluating you and extending an invitation to join for honors college. We also have a uh, alumni distinguished scholarship program, which is going on its 71st year. Um, and so this is an opportunity for the highest ranking of applicants to be invited to campus to potentially, um, you know, have opportunities to receive um, full ride scholarships, right? Um, and it is a distinguished award. We've been doing it for, again, over 70 years. And so this is no action required on students. They're automatically going to be screened when you submit your application and then Honors College will um, reach out to students directly. But when you apply to us, you're also, once you matriculate through your time and you start at Michigan State, know that you will have opportunities to apply to other scholarships that are specifically for your individual college or your area of interest. So know that as you're looking for scholarships, it doesn't just start and end at your first year. It's going to be something you'll continually do um, throughout college. And then there's a few national um, scholarship search um, engines that we also encourage students to find other scholarships. 
Couple things that I really want to highlight um, is we are a yellow ribbon institution. So um, this is something that's really great for any veteran service members um, and their dependents. So students can qualify for in-state tuition um, if you again have veteran service member status um, through the GI Bill, which is a really great incentive. Not a lot of um, you know folks know about that for Michigan State. So we want to do a much better job of, of definitely encouraging encouraging students if they fit within this um, aspect, if they if they do have um, parents who are veterans or service members to know about that tuition waiver. But one thing that is very special, especially for you all, um, um, is that there is a California Spartan Select program. So this is a merit-based award, um, and this is something that's going to be renewable for four years. And this is only available for 10 high schools in California, and your high school happens to be one of them. And so really, um, as a merit-based award, we'll be evaluating your um, transcripts. And so we will be looking at your college um, preparatory courses. So all your courses that are essentially college preparatory um, so like your English courses, your science courses, history courses, so on and so forth, essentially your A through G courses. Um, and the great thing is that there are two different um, tiers. So the first tier is 15,000, which again, over four years totals at 60,000, and then 17,500, which totals at 70,000 over four years. And so really as a merit-based, um, what we're looking at is, is, you know, technically for you to at least be at a 3.0 and above for that first tier and 3.75 and above for that second tier. Um, so there's no action required. It's just something that um, you are automatically screened for. And to kind of contextualize that, out-of-state um, awards in general for out-of-state scholarship range from five to 15,000. Um, so we would start students at 5,000, but you being a part of the California Select, we're starting you already at 15,000. Um, being at the 3.10 um, threshold. So um, that's a phenomenal um, opportunity that we definitely want to let our California Spartan Select High Schools know, and you are a part of that. And again, we'll be evaluating all of this merit-based award um, when you submit your application. Um, and applying to us is very straightforward. I like to tell students and families, we look for reasons to admit students, not deny students. And so when we um, are evaluating for admission, there are a couple things that stand out. So we are looking at all of your high school um, trajectories. So we are looking ninth grade all the way through 11th grade. Um, GPA doesn't mean um, GPA is important, but it's not a GPA alone that we're looking at. We're looking at the story behind the GPA. So we are looking at your trajectory, we're looking at grade trends, and we are heavily, heavily looking at 11th grade as a indicator of where you're at currently and what you're projected to then perform in, in um, your senior year and ultimately your first year at Michigan State. So 9th through 11th are important, 11th with um, significance, especially since that's going to be the latest information that we'll have available. Um, we do like to see rigor. So if you have the opportunity to take AP, IB honors or dual enrollment opportunities, we encourage students to do so. That's a, a way for students to stand out. Oftentimes I'm asked, how do I, how, how can I be a standout applicant? So if you're academically um, in a space and, and there is availability, that's just one way. Um, supporting information outside of that, um, we are on Common App as well as the MSU application on our website. So we do um, take the Common App essay, but there is no supplemental essay that's specific for Michigan State. Um, letters of recommendation are not required, though we do accept them. And then we are test optional. So we're going to be test optional through 2026. And then 2026 is when we will um, reevaluate and figure out what our testing policy is going to be. But as of now, we are test optional. So kind of leaning into that test optional aspect of it, um, really there's no negative impact on consideration for both scholarships as well as honors college consideration if you decide to go test optional. Um, typically the way I, my rule of thumb is if a, if a SAT or ACT score complements what you're showcasing on your transcript, then it's another academic um, marker that's gonna work in favor for you. Um, but if you're like anything like, like I was as a student where testing just wasn't my thing um, and it didn't really measure accurately the way in which I thought I can, um, you know, do well academically, then I would favor to do test optional and not submit scores. Again, there really is no disadvantage 
um, for students to, to not submit SAT or ACT scores. Um, additionally, if you are taking AP um, exams, we do accept three or higher, which will be great for students who essentially want to already come in with college credit, right? So AP exams are also great. Um, but again, just wanted to share, share our current test um, policy. And then just a really brief overview on application date. So this is an overview on application deadline. So typically every year application opens August 1st. So early action non-binding, meaning if you are admitted to Michigan State, you still have the luxury to um, wait on other opportunities to see if you want to pursue Michigan State or not. So it is a non-binding. So if you apply to us by November 1st, again, um, that there's that maximum scholarship consideration. But as a California Select School, um, that doesn't necessarily really fall under that category. This is mainly for other out-of-state applicants who don't are not part of the, the uh, California Select. Um, but if you do apply early action, you at least will hear by us by January 15th. Students who are applying now are already getting decisions. We release decisions as early as mid-October this year. So we're um, really moving on making sure students have enough time um, and their family have enough time to know where they stand with Michigan State so you can you know, get in contact with me as an example to ask any questions that you have specifically about your particular major or any questions around finances. That's also something that's important. So my biggest advice is um, as you're applying and, and you hear early on, use the time that you have um, to get in contact with your admissions representatives to ask any of those questions just to kind of um, figure out what's going to be your best option as you're weighing several options potentially. Um, if you're not applying for early action, that's fine. We also have our regular mission, which will be February 1st, and then our um, guarantees to get you a decision no later than March 31st. And then we go on rolling admission thereafter, just depending on space. Um, but I will say just a quick note about rolling admission. We actually brought in our largest academic class this last year with over 9,600. So space is definitely um, the students are not waiting to, to apply to Michigan State. And so though we, we are rolling, um, I definitely encourage students to try to get in their application um, by either early action or regular decision. Whenever you decide to submit your application, just know that if you are offered admission, you have until May 1st to accept your offer of admission. So you do have to formally accept your offer, but you have until May 1st. So whenever you find out up until May 1st, um, again, I encourage you to get in contact with your admissions officers just to ask any of those very important um, questions that are, are going to be top of mind just to, to decide what school is going to be the best fit. Um, and try to get it on as early as you can, right? Definitely don't wait till the last um, week before May to ask those questions, because in many times, if there are questions, there may be something that the admissions officer, such as myself, can do in terms of a solution. Um, so again, my biggest advice is, is just be very active with, with getting in contact with those folks um, before you have to make a decision if, you're, if you have a few questions in mind. These are um, some really great ways to get connected. So one of the things is I invite you to take a look at our campus. So we do have in-person visits that are happening now. And so um, seeing campus for itself is gonna be a really good indicator to figure out if, if, if this is gonna be a good fit for you, if, if, if MSU has all the amenities you're looking for, if it's just, you know, um, a large enough campus, um, right? So um, you can scan the QR code to, to visit our um, campus website to see any available upcoming in-person visits. But then we also have a really great program. It's MSU Unibuddy. So this is a great resources for any students um, to actually get in contact with the current MSU students. So if you have any questions, I mean anything from how's your experience to, um, you know, how, any tips to, to, to start my experience strong or what's been some of the challenges or anything that you're really wanting to know about a student's perspective um, is essentially what Unibuddy is here for. So you can be um, a student or a parent, but we encourage you to get in contact with our students just because I think they have a very different perspective than some of the professionals that work at Michigan State, whether you're staff or faculty. So a student's perspective might come with a different value um, to you, especially if you are a student. So either way, these are just some great ways to get in contact. If you are tuning in and you applied and you are offered admission, just keep note that we do have an admitted student program um, happening in April. Uh, more information on the specific date will come out shortly, but that's also a great way to visit campus if you are admitted. Otherwise, our regularly scheduled um, campus visits are also great. 
So um, that's essentially all of the information I wanted to share with you about Michigan State. Of course, there's so many other aspects of our campus um, and you know admissions information, but I wanted to be succinct and I wanted to make sure that I just got you the most important information from my perspective. But I'm also leaving you my contact information. So again, I am your designated um, admissions counselor um, and I'm also physically based out here. So I live in Los Angeles. Um, so I'm on the same time zone as you. So if you have any questions, you can reach out to me. That is my cell phone. Um, and then that is my email. I'm always checking emails. So the best way to get in touch with me um, is email. Um, but I wanted to provide that because, um, again, I am hopefully <laughs> give off the vibe that I'm personable. Um, and I'm thinking about, you know, the college experience that I went through. And so I just want to let, you know, students and family know that I'm, I'm here to help and, and answer any questions that I can. I'm also a member of um, the Regional, Regional Admissions Counselors of California, also known as RAC. And so it's connected with 175 plus out of state and international um, institutions that are really just here to, to recruit um, students, but also really just share the options um, for out of state and international options. I'm also a member um, of that great organization. So if you have any questions about any other potential institutions, I'm happy to connect you as well. Um, otherwise, the admissions.msu.edu um, website is also very, very useful for Michigan State specific um, questions and answers. But again, don't hesitate to reach out if you have any questions. So I'm going to look away from my screen and just look at the chat here to see if I missed anything. So let's see here. Can the in-state tuition fee be applied after my first year during undergrad or after? Let me see. So in-state tuition, typically um, in-state tuition, like if you are granted in-state tuition um, through, like again, if you're taking advantage of the great um, military benefit that we have, then we would typically um, get that situated before you start your first year, just so you can um, pay the appropriate tuition rate. Um, that way when you, when you are, you know, proceeding, you're, you're paying that in state. So, um, I think, I think that's the, the question there. Um, but typically we would get all that situated before you start at Michigan state for any, um, re, re, um, residency status. Um, let's see here. So that is essentially my formal presentation, but, um, I'm, I think we have a little bit of time. I'm, I'm happy to take any questions if anybody wants to, again, drop it in the chat or unmute themselves. Um, well, I wanna thank you, Isaac, for this great information. And um, if anyone has any questions after tonight, uh, you're welcome to contact Isaac. And if you don't get the... Um, information. You can always contact the Mrs. Martell in the College and Career Center. I'm happy to forward his information. Oh, we have another question here from uh, a participant. Do you yeah, want to see get here. that? So um, is it mandatory to live on campus for the first two years? So currently, yes, that is our housing policy. Students are required to live on the campus for the first two years. There are um, opportunities to submit an exemption um, within our housing. And so there's several exemptions. And so um, housing will accept any and all um, exemption requests. And then it will be at the discretion of the housing office to accept that or not. Otherwise, yes, yeah, students will, will be living on campus for the, the first two years. So um, housing essentially is also guaranteed for, for those students as well. Great question. Um, Isaac, do you want to go back and mention the study abroad benefit? You oh, that's right. I, um, let's see here. Yeah, so it's not highlighted in any one of the slides, but it is definitely one of those additional financial support factors. So in addition to us um, evaluating you for merit-based scholarship, all students are actually qualified for the presidential's um, education abroad award. And so this award is, is great. It, it ranges from three to $5,000 and students are essentially able to utilize those funds 
to take advantage of an education abroad opportunity. So when I say um, we mean that education abroad is a really important program for us, we mean it because we back students up financially from that aspect. So um, again, there's no action required. All students will be evaluated and, and be offered that three to $5,000 scholarship. And if you decide to take advantage of, of that, um, just know that you at least have a range of funds depending on what program you decide to choose and the length of it and the amount that it's going to cost. Um, but you at least have some financial support to help you get that great opportunity, which um, isn't isn't too common. Um, you know, typically, yeah, there's great education abroad opportunities, but oftentimes I see students having to figure out how to financially on their own figure out how to pay for it. And so to know that we have this great presidential um, scholarship award for education abroad already for students is something that I think is phenomenal for us to support students, um, not just with program, but also financial. So that is something that you can stack on. And that is also a part of the Spartan Select aspect, um, as well as any other um, financial support that you might get by submitting your, your FAFSA. So FAFSA is also something that you're going to want to complete regardless of your, your financial background, simply because it gives us another financial um, insight on your specific um, situation. So oftentimes if students get their awards, and it's something that um, you know they, they wanna to talk to me about, I definitely encourage you to reach out to me just so I can explain the award and then have any conversation about any potential um, things that we can do to make Michigan State uh, a realistic option for you. So um, again, that's also kind of me emphasizing and pushing, really get in contact with me if, if you are in the place of being admitted and you have questions, especially about it making financial sense, happy to have that conversation with you. All right, well, I wanna thank you, Isaac, for your time this evening. And I wanna thank everyone for attending the workshop tonight. Um, I'll be posting this video and the slides on my YouTube channel and you'll be able to find that on the College and Career website. And uh, anyway, thank you again. Have a good evening and happy Thanksgiving to you, Isaac. Talk to you Thanks soon. everyone, take care, be safe. Looking forward to staying connected. Take care.